Folks, we've gotten our first little taste of Street Fighter 6. Capcom has released a couple trailers. They've released some information on the Street Fighter 6 website. And now we have our first idea of what this upcoming fighting game is going to be like. What's it going to look like? What's it going to play like? And etc. And I'm just going to let you guys know, uh, I'm feeling fairly hopeful. Uh, obviously, there are some things I have reservations about, but Street Fighter V was a pretty big disaster at launch. And from what we've seen of Street Fighter VI, I think Capcom has learned some important lessons. So I'm going to be going through what are, in my opinion, the top five things that it looks like Street Fighter VI is doing right so far. Guys, if you like this type of content, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps me out a lot. And let me know down in the comments what are some things that you think look good or look bad if there are some things you take issue with. Let me know about that down in the comments as well. But with that being said, let's get right into the list. So the first thing that I think looks pretty good so far is Capcom is really focusing more on single player content in Street Fighter 6. If you guys don't remember, Street Fighter 5 launched with basically no single player. I think it didn't have arcade mode, it didn't have story mode, it had like versus AI and some tutorials. And that's about it. Uh, but it looks like they're really doubling their efforts here and trying to make sure that there's stuff to do in Street Fighter 6 other than just playing online. So on the Street Fighter 6 website, they have an entire page dedicated to this world tour mode. It's coming soon. They don't have too much info for us, but they can tell us it's an immersive single player mode. It's a completely new experience that defies genre labels. And from the brief glimpse we got in the trailer, that seems to be true. Like you can see, uh, there's this whole city, Metro City, it looks like, that uh, presumably you're going to be able to run around in, go to different locations. It seems like you might even have a customizable character, like you're not picking one of the characters from the game. You get to make your guy or have like a generic guy that you play as. You can run around, sure, you can in barrels, getting with random fights with people on the street. That's what Street Fighter is all about. So yeah, I think it's really great that Capcom is doing this. I think single player is more important than you might think in a fighting game. A lot of the most beloved fighting games of all time, games like Soul Calibur 2, Mortal Kombat 10, Super Smash Brothers, all of them. One of the reasons why they're so successful is because of single player. So hopefully this world tour mode ends up being awesome and a lot of fun to play. But regardless, just the fact that Capcom is emphasizing it, that it seems like they're putting a lot of effort into it, I think is a good sign for things to come. But let's move on to some of the actual fighting gameplay itself. So one thing that I think is a pretty smart idea is that in Street Fighter 6, there are actually going to be two control schemes that you can choose from when you're playing the game. So they cover this in depth on the website here. You can see there's now modern controls and classic controls. So classic controls is pretty easy to explain. It's what we've always had in Street Fighter 6 normal attacks. And if you want to do a special move, you have to do a combination of directions plus one of your normal attacks. But now we got this new thing, Modern. And Modern is a little closer to something like Super Smash Brothers, where now you have a dedicated button that does special moves. And by combining the button with directions, uh, you can get your different special moves. So obviously, this is a big benefit because now special moves are instant. And especially for newer players who have trouble inputting Dragon Punch motions or half circles or whatever, now it's going to be really easy for them. But it does come with one big downside, which is now you only have three normal attack buttons. So it seems like you're kind of losing access to half your normals. And also this means you only get access to one version of each special plus EX. So you can't do light, medium, and heavy fireball. You can only do fireball or EX fireball. So there are some downsides to this, but I think for new players, this is going to do a great job of getting them into the door. It also seems like there's kind of like an auto attack system. If you hold R2 and press a button, you'll get like an auto combo. Uh, so yeah, I think this is really smart. Obviously, I don't expect this to be viable at a tournament level. And it probably shouldn't be, that'd be a little bit silly, but I think for people who are just picking up the game, they want to see what Street Fighter is all about, they want to get through the story mode or whatever, I think this is a really smart way to do it. So I really like this idea of the modern control scheme. Also, something someone pointed out on Twitter that I thought was clever is that Classic is a hexagon, six sides, six buttons. Modern is a square, four buttons, four sides. And I was also thinking, you know, like Classic is like a big iconic Capcom C because Capcom is so associated 
associated with that six button control scheme with the fireballs and the uppercut motions. Uh, so I like sort of the branding here as well. They didn't go and call this like simple mode or baby mode or anything. It's modern mode, but if you're a boomer like me, you can play on classic mode. All right, next up at number three, this is kind of a weird one. Maybe not everyone's going to agree with me on this one, but I really like this new real-time commentary system that they're trying in Street Fighter VI, where they have real-life actual tournament commentators in the game that you can have them commentate what's happening on screen. So, so far, they've revealed two. They've revealed Vicious doing English commentary and Aru doing Japanese commentary. And yeah, it's possible that this mode is just gonna suck. It's possible it's gonna be really annoying. You'll hear the same lines over and over. No one's gonna wanna use this. But even if it works just kind of okay, I think this is such a cool idea because this could really help like bridge the gap and get people interested in watching fighting games competitively. You know, they're like, wait a minute, like this is actually like a thing, like a sport with like actual announcers? That's kind of sick. Or like you fire up Twitch and it's like, oh, isn't that that vicious guy is commentating right now? I know him from playing the game, you know, myself. And then you'll stick around and watch. So I think it's a good idea to help bridge that gap, to help bring in people who enjoy Street Fighter, but they don't really care or know anything about the competitive side. Uh, it can just help onboard them in like a more gentle way. So I think it's a cool idea. It might not actually work in practice. We'll have to wait and see, but it seems like a uh, pretty cool thing based on what we've seen so far. All right, next up at number two, I want to talk about some of the system mechanics, and you can see what's happening here on screen. There's a few things being executed that are part of the new mechanical system that is inside Street Fighter VI, which is called the Drive System. So the Drive System also is covered pretty in-depth on their website, and something that I am really relieved about is this is not a comeback mechanic. This is not a mechanic that you get access to when you're close to dying or when you take a lot of damage or whatever. This is just a mechanic that you always have access to, and you're going to gain uh, meters for this throughout the round, regardless of how much damage you're taking. So I like that right off the bat. Not a comeback mechanic. You can see there is a drive gauge that is, hey, it's available as soon as the round begins, like I said, and uh, there's a lot of different moves that you can do with it. So you can do the drive impact costs one gauge, and that is basically going to be like an armored move. It seems kind of like a focus attack type deal from Street Fighter 4. Uh, you can also do a drive parry. It's going to use half a bar. Uh, and let you parry and then you can follow up, you know, and punish whatever the opponent hits you with. So that is another one. You can do overdrive, which is like an EX version of a move, a powered up special move. These are the same attacks as EX special moves in the past games. You're going to get the drive rush, which is kind of like an FADC, kind of like canceling any attack into a dash. Or you can cancel your parry into a dash and that'll only cost one. It'll cost three if you want to FADC a move. And then finally, you have Drive Reversal. It costs two, and this is basically going to be like your Alpha Counter, your V Reversal. You can do it while you're blocking. So that was a lot of words, but long story short, the Drive is going to be sort of the new secondary system in addition to Super Meters in the game. And overall, I'm just really relieved that this doesn't seem super broken like V-Trigger. Obviously, we're going to have to wait and see how it plays out in the match. But the fact that this is not a comeback mechanic... It doesn't seem like this is going to be some crazy big swing where all of a sudden it's like, okay, drive enabled, time to bring back this match that I was totally getting stomped and scam out a win. Uh, I'm glad they don't seem to be going in that direction, and I'm curious to get my hands on the game and see exactly everything we can do with all these different drive mechanics, because there's a lot of them. All right, and then the number one thing that I think we've seen that has me excited is that it looks like they are giving, even the old characters, they are giving them some very interesting new tools. So this doesn't seem like it's going to be another game where, you know, the Street Fighter 2 characters, they're going to play pretty much the same as what we're used to. That doesn't necessarily seem to be the case, and you can tell a lot of the Street Fighter 2 characters are being redesigned as well which I think goes along well with this idea that, yeah, chun Li's in the game, Ryu is in the game, maybe some other leaked characters are in the game, but it's not just going to be the same thing that we've seen in every other game they've appeared in. So I think chun Li is a great example here. So there were some details released on the PlayStation blog, and they talked about she now has a new stance. chun Li is now kind of a stance character. It's kind of like Ling Zhao Yu in Tekken, where she gets down really low to the ground, and she has various follow-up attacks. So it looks like she has a launcher similar to her close standing heavy kick in some other games or she has sort of this double overhead punch 
and presumably she's going to have some other enders for the stance as well. So that's pretty exciting. That really changes the character quite a bit. Ryu also has a couple new moves. He has sort of like a short range, like double palm Hadoken that has no range. That's a new move. But even more interesting, he now has Denjin Charge, where he sort of does like an animation and that will power up uh, certain key based moves. So maybe a little similar to like Tiger Scar from Street Fighter 4 for Sagat which powered up his Tiger Uppercuts, except this seems to power up his Hadoken and this new Hasho Geki move. So, uh, yeah, they're giving us some new tools. Street Fighter V, it felt like a lot of characters were kind of simplified and had tools taken away from previous games. So I like that in Street Fighter VI, it seems they're going the other direction and giving us some new fun toys to play with. So I like this, and I actually do like what we've seen of the gameplay. Uh, I'm not pure 100% positive there are some things we've seen that I think are a little weird or make me scratch my head a little bit but uh, maybe that'll be for a different video but that's gonna be it for this video guys let me know what you think down in the comments do you agree are there any of these things that I said that you're like actually I think that's gonna be a problem let me know why and uh, let me know if you'd like to see more videos maybe talking about some of the reservations that I have because again I'm not 100% positive about the game, but I am hopeful. So with that, guys, we're going to end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.